Hello, I'm Jake, and today I'm joined with Mike. Hello there. Mike is going to be helping putting the uh, landing door, getting all the electronics done, the servo. He's got a great idea on how to. Um, you have. You got a great idea <laughs> on how to. It's get a vicious rumor. Yeah, get the servo in there, link it all up, and everything. It's better than what I was thinking when I told him about it, and he told me what I should do. I said, "Well, I might as well come and film this episode." With you, yeah. You, um, I yeah. just punched the landing craft, but it's okay. It's it's right here. Um, I did see the video and went, Jake. What are you doing, man? Stop what you're doing. Along with fifty I've, other thousand people. I've got some <laughs> ideas. Yeah, got some ideas. So yeah, that is the plan. That's what we are doing. Um, I bought a load of kit today with me, so Mike can have a little play with stuff. We got a few bits here. Uh, we even have wire. I bought some wire. We've got some wire. We've got wire. Yeah, we've got wire. Uh, we got some servo testers as well. Yeah. Just so we can servo testing. do some work on Batches that. Batteries for it. Uh, we got the other landing craft bits. All of that. So, yeah, what we're going to do is get stuck straight into it. We've had our drinks and everything, and we're ready to go. Right, so um, Mike's going to be helping us out on this. And what do you do, Mike? Mike, um, I'm, I'm a modeler by. By trade, right? Well, I say trade. As it started off as a hobby, and I've pretty much spent most of my life modelling. Uh, if you've seen the other videos that, that are on Jake's channel, um, I've popped up every now and then. Um, I'm basically his local model shop and technical expert. Yeah, if if in doubt, come the mic. Allegedly, it's a vicious rumor, but yeah. Um, so it, it, most type of modelling: helicopters, planes, cars, boats. Um, Electrical systems, electronic systems, uh, basically pretty much everything to do with modelling I've probably done, did or doing at the time. So. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I mean, you look around your house and you've got planes, models, absolutely everywhere. Yeah, um, some would say it's a bit a bit hoarderish, but uh, i say it's a passion. Because most of the stuff here you've built anyway, and it looks good. Oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, and also it's... it's, it's, it's I can't do this little ornament trinket things, and there is definitely no soaps on that TV. In fact, that TV is set to explode if there's any soaps of any type come on there. You listening, women? Yeah. This is not the man for you. No. No, definitely not. Yeah. Oh. Hopefully, the idea of today is is work out some ideas for this front um, door, this lowering hatch thing. Now, some ideas are because I was explaining to Jake. We could use a servo on its own with an arm, with a, a wire rod or something similar going all the way to the front. And that's that would work, that's a good idea, but it depends on how much movement we need to do on the front door to how much movement we've got on the servo. Now, if we make the arm longer on the servo, that will give us more travel up and down, which is great. But the longer the arm on the servo is, the less torque is produced. So the shorter, more torque, but less movement. Further away, less torque, more movement. It's a, yeah, it's catch twenty two. Now you could do it another couple of another couple of ways. One being you could potentially turn that into a linear movement, forward and back something a bit like this so inside there you've got a gear and then you've got like a, a long plate with teeth on it so as you sort of push it it moves like that now the servo could potentially go on to where this gear is in here and move that arm forward and backwards that then could be connected to a wire going to the front now in doing that you'd probably be best with the servo to remove the potentiometer inside. Now for those who don't know, a servo is basically a little circuit board in the bottom with an amplifier which takes the signal from the receiver and amplifies the signal and it's also got a little bit of brains in there which tells the arm where it is. Um, now this top bit is a gearbox and inside there is a thing called a pot with potentiometer. Now when the servo moves, this pot moves so the servo knows where it is in space and time. 
Now, if you remove that and say we put that at the front, we could have that connected to the door at the front. So the guts of the servo, the gearbox, the amplifier, the motor and everything could be back here, nice and out of the way. And if we did something along the lines of a gear with a rack on there, it's basically known as a rack and pinion type system. There's your rack, the bit that slides across, and then the pinion would be the gear in there. Um, you could get quite a good movement forward and back um, with a you know, reasonable amount of torque and power. And the advantage of doing it like that is you can get more movement at the servo. One thing I forgot to point out is servos are limited. Uh, Inside they've got a, a piece, this is one I've removed earlier, uh, there's the part where the servo head sits on, and that's the gear there, which is driven, and you'll find it's like a little tag or a pin on the actual um, main output, and this is a limiter, this will only allow the servo to go so far before it's mechanically stopped. This also stops it from destroying the potentiometer, which if I take that off, you can see the head of it under there. Now, if you take that out, the potentiometer, if you take the little pip off, then that'll rotate constantly in one direction or another, depending on if you've got the uh, stick or the trigger on your controller all the way forward or all the way backwards which is great because you can make this thing into a basically a little um, speed controller motor driven whatever you want if you do the mods like that now when you take the pot out you'll have three wires on it uh, we don't have one to hand but, but basically it'll be three wires and you'll have three wires go into it a grain plane and then it's like a plus and a minus um, and then what you can do is if you put two resistors on either side so one resistor this side and one resistor that side of both the same value it can be pretty much any value within reason um, you bridge them across instead of having a potentiometer that'll make the servo center so it will stay stationary until you move your trigger or your controller and then it will go linear forward or linear backwards so basically you've turned it into a speed controller uh, great if you want to do things like this I mean we're going to do basically this principle for driving the motors in here uh, and also how it's at a later date we're going to do the tank which is going to be in here it'll have two servos uh, sat opposed to each other the Limiters, the mechanical limiters will be taken out, the potentiometers will be taken out, and that will be the motor, gearbox, and speed controllers all in one. Now, to get the what's known as the mix in, which will be how you get the controller to work, so if you've got sticks, you've got forward, back, left, and right, or if you've got a pistol trigger, you'll have like pull back for forward, forward, uh, forward for back, and then your steering wheel for left and right. If you just put the two servos in the receiver and you did that, you'd have one that goes forward, one goes back, and the other one goes forward, and the other one goes back. And they wouldn't mix, basically. It wouldn't work. So you use one of these things. Unless your radio has this type of mix in. Um, if you're using very basic radio, use one of these, which is a V-tail mixer. Really cheap, you can get them from model shop, internet, eBay, all of the above and in between. And all you would do is connect the two servos on the output, and then those two wires would go into your receiver. Yeah, well, there's a receiver in there, so those two would go in there. And then that would allow you to have basically tank, tank style control. So you'd move forward, the vehicle would move forward, pull back, the vehicle would go back, left, it would rotate left, right, it would rotate right. But if you did forward and left, you'd skew. So basically, it's like driving a, a tank using that principle. In this 
model it means you don't have to use a, a rudder you can literally use um, uh, independent thrust so you know they're working together or in, independent of each other uh, same system as they would be put in the tank um, but that's getting ahead of ourselves so at the moment we've just got to work out the best way and the easiest way to get this door to go up and down I say there's a couple of ways we can do this uh, we want the easiest we've been up too long um, <laughs> <laughs> something that just involves throwing stuff in gluing um, I hope you're not referring to me <laughs> no <laughs> not at all not at all not in the slightest <laughs> That goes there, that, that goes, goes there. there, loads of glue, and <laughs> voila. voila. <laughs> yeah, so we've got to work out how... So basically, we do have a servo at the moment that's not doing anything. Yeah. The servo that I put in for the rudder is pointless. Yeah. Because, like, not gonna like use you said, it. we don't need the rudder, no. and I 100% back him on that now. I mean, you, what you've done, you could do, but... The way the model is, the way the motors are set up, and the way the, the rudder would be, you'd get so little authority on steering and that. And steering yeah. off. It, yeah. Yes, it would work, um, but it's this way you've got more control. Right. And you can literally turn on a dime. You can, and, and that's what I need for, to line it up with yeah. where. For I'm a model of this size, it. where you're going to be using it, you want as much maneuverability yeah. as possible. It means you don't have to have a, a, a steering. You know, a rudder better. servo in there, yeah. you don't need a tiller, you don't need all that. You've just got two motors either pushing together or working independently. Um, it's a much simpler system to be fair. Yeah. Um, some would argue that a motor and a rudder would be simpler, but yeah. Yeah, but I didn't want to go with one motor. I honestly no. wanted the two like the real thing. Yeah, yeah. It, it gives you it gives you more sort of power and torque yeah. and in this case maneuverability because they you know could be working together. Right, after quite a lengthy pause of trying to figure out the best way we want to do it. Yeah, the best way we want to get this door working. We had a good look online at you know the model because I didn't bring the box with me or any of the other parts. Um, and it looks like the best way to do this is probably the way they did it on the full size. Yeah, getting it all linked up and working as it would have back in uh, D Day. Yeah. So at the moment, Mike is just trying out with cotton and that, seeing um, you know the length and how much pull we need and everything. Basically, we need to work out how much pull we need to bring that ramp fully up. Yeah. And that will decide on how we're going to make the mechanism for the movement yeah up and down uh, because after looking at it with the bars going inside and all of that nonsense it did look like this would be a lot easier it looks like the real thing and it it's going to give us what we need that exact pull on that door yeah so we don't have to worry about trying to set the door up to go all the way down and all the way up properly this should work as it should yeah um, like the real thing it saves us having to put extra wire links in and mechanisms and god knows what else. We've also got the door fitted, uh, not permanently, just we've put some bar in, make sure it goes up and down. Um, and you know, that was like a five minute job, and it's nice to see that door on it. In fact, we've spent a couple of minutes keep pushing it up and down. Just that's because we're solid, load the individuals. Yes. <laughs> But no, yeah, it's all going to plan, and yeah, ideally I should have probably brought every part with me. Yeah, it would have helped the situation. But, never mind, I can always come back here another day. Put some light on the subject. Uh, yeah, get the lights on. Um, so yeah, that's where we are. So Mike has just installed a servo temporarily up here. Yeah. And linked it to the... This is proving the one way of doing it, and the drawbacks of it. Now... We've, put, we've changed the servo head from a tiny one to the biggest I can get and before anyone points out, yes it is the wrong servo head for that type of servo, that's why it's at a cranky angle, it's purely just to, to sort of show and tell. Now, we've got a bit of weight on there to hold it down. Now, we've got the cable going up roughly where the original one would have gone, moved slightly more but it's just proof of concept. Now this is the drawback 
of showing this idea um, because of the amount of movement we need on the door if I turn this up we're going to run out of travel long before we get up to where we need it to be so for this idea it's not going to work now we could do it by putting more levers and things in here and making it all very complicated by getting a larger movement by putting uh, mechanisms and so forth in here basically arms the sort of L arms um, cranks and things like that but I think the way we're going to do it is either no oh, it is we're going to um, we're going to modify one of these servos to act as a pulley and then the 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 sensor, the pot that's in there, potentiometer that's in there, we're going to mount either somewhere down the front or somewhere around where it's going to connect to this front door and it will tell the server where it is. So this thing can quite happily spool around until the door comes up and it moves the pot and it goes right, you're in centre or you're at extreme to where you need to be and then it will stop that server. So we're going to turn it into a pulley system rather than a normal sort of servo system. So for that we're going to need to do a little bit of servo modification, um, which we'll show either in this video or in another. And that's what we're going to do with that. We also need the other parts for this because we're going to actually make it um, as per original where the uh, original cable used to go in the um, frames and everything and I think it was somewhere back here that the pulley from what I've seen in the pictures I think it's back here somewhere that the cables will run down so oh, that's what we're going to try and to achieve yep sounds like a plan any questions? right <coughs> right right we've got us basically we've got ourselves a plan of action we've kind of know what we're going to do yeah, um, we kind of know what we're going to do. We've got a plan of action. Um, we just now need the bits to put it together. Um, yeah, so basically what we're going to do is leave this as an episode because there's no point coming back in a week's time doing another episode and we may as well do two parts. Yeah. So everyone can be caught up. So there will be a link in the description when part two's done to part two from this. Uh, but no, I'm glad at what we have accomplished because... It doesn't look like we've got much done, but we know how we've brainstormed. Going to it. Yeah, we've brainstormed some ideas. We've come up with some better ideas. Um, it's gonna it's, work as well. Hopefully, yeah. I can, I can't see why it wouldn't. Put, well, we'll, we'll know. When there's we've many done reasons it. why it may not. Yeah, but that list always it's always gonna be long in it. So yeah, but it's same with everything because this was not made. This is not a kit you can buy and just turn in an RC. It's a model, a display model. They did not plan someone to do this when they designed it. So, yeah, that's where we're at. But that's what modelers do. Yeah, that's what we, you do. We, as find, well. we find stuff that's like. Mike could RC anything. Within reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will be looking at some lorries in the future, so. Some yeah, trucks. some lorries. Well, the tank, obviously, the yeah, tank's going to go in here as well. So Which is going to be a fantastic add on addition. Because I wasn't sure, was I to go with a truck, a Jeep? But it's so common, and I wanted to do something different. Yeah, something a tank, but but yeah. With with modelling, there's nothing there's nothing new above the sun. Most of this stuff has been done before, and yeah, it's who does it and things. When because I've never done it, so I'm learning at the same time. And you never know, in in a couple of years, I might be able to make my own RC tank. Yeah, it's just practice. It's, yeah, practice makes perfect. So if anyone's getting into the hobby, it's just practice. If you got, if you've got a love for it, a passion for it, or just an interest in it, just keep on going with it, and you'll be amazed on where it could take you. Yeah, and I'm really, really optimistic that this is going to look great once it's on the pond, um, and especially when the tank comes off it, mm. uh, it will really, really look good. All we, all we need now is, is if. It, is it a frigate that you use these come off or destroy? It's a frigate, isn't it? Uh, yeah. I can't remember. No. It's not that much of a boat person, to be fair. Me, me neither, to be honest. I love my ships and ocean liners and that, but yeah, I'm not a genius about it. Ask me anything about trains and, you know, but 
Don't it's showing them up, that's a trick. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's what dirt takes for. <laughs> right, so thank you all for watching. Please Bye. hit the like button. Uh, any questions, drop them in the comments below and I will pass them on to Mike because they're probably all for you. Uh, so I yeah. don't want them. I don't want them. <laughs> you, you have a massive list like, okay, answer that one, answer that one, answer that one. So this is the end of part three and we will be doing add-on to part three of getting this all working with the door. Uh, get that door motorised and everything. And the drivetrain. Yeah, we'll get that all sorted and yeah, hopefully yeah. it should all work. So basically we've got ourselves a battle plan now. We know what we're going to do. Um, we just need the weapons. We just need the bits to do it now. Yeah. And uh, more time. And more sleep. Because yeah, he hasn't been asleep for 24 hours roughly. Nah, so. nah, I've been up two days. The nah. usual thing. Yeah. Modelling again. Just in, in the man cave working yeah. on summer. Yeah. yeah. I usually get on something and I'll be on it for a day or two. No sleep. No nothing. Just yeah. uh, that's, that's passion. That is, that's just bloody crazy actually, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Never mind. Oh well. Alright, thanks for watching. Cheers, and we shall see you again soon.